this short little video on how to use R to do some simple categorical analyses. Um, at times we may be faced with uh, examining the relationship between two categorical variables. Uh, categorical variables, the relationship between them. In such cases we'll want to do something along the lines of a chi-squared test of independence. Sometimes we have hypotheses about the distribution of a single categorical variable, in which case we'd want to use a chi-squared goodness of it test. This little video shows how to do both of those in R. So let's open up R. First step again is to load our data. Notice we're going to source those external useful functions. It's going to be the stat grades data set. We are going to use the college variable, so we'll need to uh, recode the lasso person as an other person. We're also going to use the pass, uh, got pass variable, so we need to find that. Notice all of that happens before the attach. So we run those, look over here on the left, make sure nothing breaks. Nothing broke. So there's our data. Data is installed in, is in the memory. First step, get to know your data. We'll do a bar plot of gender versus college. Colleges, genders, going to be female on the bottom, male on the top. Or if you don't like the stacked bar plots, you could do a side by side. That looks gives the same information, but this may be more readable. Another way of looking at bivariate data is with a mosaic plot. So instead of bar plot, it's mosaic mosaic plot. The width of these mosaics is the number of people in those genders. The heights will be the number of people in those colleges. So you can just look at it and see that the major more people people in the in the data are male college of arts and sciences than anyone else, and the fewest seem to be male Kasner, although female Ed could be the smallest. Kind of difficult to read. Bivariate categorical data is hard to graph meaningfully. There's also the association plot. I find this useful at times because it does give an indication of, of the relationship or the deviation of the relationship that we observe from the hypothesis of equal proportions or hypothesis of independence. Um, so it looks like Kasner has a lot more uh, females than it should if independence were true and two few males if independence were true. Arts and sciences not much. Yeah. So that's one way of getting to know your data. The first null hypothesis we're going to test is if the proportion of students in each of the colleges is equal. We just highlight that. So that gives us a table. In other words, we're hypothesizing that these numbers are all the same. Technically, those numbers divided by the total number of people in the sample are the same. I know it's a lot of casts, so we're probably going to reject this null hypothesis. But I just want to give you a little look at this. Notice it's just chisq.test. That's the function. Inside the function, you give it the table. And since we're examining college, it's going to be the table of the college. p-value is less than alpha. The test statistic is 86, but the p-value less than alpha reject the null hypothesis. The proportion of students in each of the five colleges is not the same. I know that's really not surprising. It's also not surprising given what reality tells us. If you look at a, a, a if you look at a lot of different universities, arts and sciences is the most populous college. In fact, it tends to have six times more students in it than other colleges in the university. So let's go ahead and test if OSU is similar to other universities in that its College of Arts and Sciences has six times the number of students as others. Notice the change. We are specifying those probabilities or proportions. What order are we doing this in? The exact same order as the table is in. Business, Arts and Sciences, Kasner, Ed, and other. Since we're saying that, since we're hypothesizing that CAS has six times the students as each of the others, K 
cast is going to be 0.6 and each of those will be 0.1. Notice that this all adds to 1 as it should. Let's go ahead and run that. Test statistic is 1.25, degrees of freedom is still 4, there's 5 colleges, 5 minus 1 is 4, p-value is now 0.8698. Here's something important. We cannot conclude that the actual proportions in each of the colleges is 10%, 60%, 10%, 10%, 10%. That is not our conclusion. We can only conclude that th that distribution is reasonable given our data. In other words, we don't have evidence that this distribution is wrong. We don't know it's right, but it is reasonable. So that was a chi-squared goodness of fit test. Notice it's a univariate test. There is only one variable we're looking at. In this case, it's college. If there's two variables we want to look at and compare, then it'll be a bivariate test, which is the chi-squared test of independence. Chi-squared test of independence, using college and gender, can test the null hypothesis that males and females choose the college at equal levels. Can test the null hypothesis that each of the colleges has the same proportion of males to females. Can test the hypothesis that the distribution of college selection by males is the same as the distribution of college selection by females. Can test the null hypothesis that college and gender are independent. All of those things that we can test are equivalent from a statistical standpoint. From a scientific standpoint, yeah, they have subtle differences. But from a statistical standpoint, they don't. Chi-squared test of independence is also a chi-squared test. Give it a table with two categorical variables, college and gender. P-value is greater than alpha, fail to reject the null hypothesis. That does not mean that the two variables are independent does mean that we did not detect the dependence between them. It does not mean that the distribution of colleges is the same for males as for females. It does mean that we did not detect a difference in those distributions between males and females. It does not mean that males and females choose the colleges at the same rate. It does mean we did not detect a difference in that rate that males and females choose the different colleges. And the warning message, pay attention in class, you'll find out why that exists. And it has to do with the assumption, the assumption of what it takes to make the cell counts normally distributed. All right. So that was the test of independence between college and gender. Remember, this data does come from a stat class. So instead of looking at college versus gender, maybe as a teacher, it would be more interesting for me to determine if the pass rate differs amongst the five colleges. And this will test that null hypothesis, that the pass rate does not differ, that the business majors pass at the same rate as the uh, College of Arts and Science majors, who pass at the same rate as Kastner majors, as Ed majors, and as other majors, that there is no differential passing rate. Well, let's find out. Control R will give us that answer. There's the p-value. Test statistic is 14.728. P-value is 0 0.005299. P-value is less than alpha. Reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we reject the null hypothesis that the colleges or the students in the colleges pass at the same rate. That means that at least one college has students that pass at a different rate. Now, I'm not going to tell you the statistical tests. I'll save that for a different course. That'll be the categorical data analysis course. But if we look at the proportions table, control R, we see that business students pass at only a 23% rate, but Kasner students pass at a 91% rate. Education students pass at a 67% rate. CAS students, arts and science students, pass at a 70% rate. 
So it doesn't surprise us that there's a difference. In fact, I think looking at this table, knowing that there is a statistical difference, we can conclude that business students pass at a statistically significantly lower rate than any of the others, just by looking at the table. Now that has some implications for teachers who teach business students. And that's why we're here, to learn about relationships in the real world. And so that's the end of this short little video. And this actually is the last video and last handout for the course. Hopefully these were helpful for, for you. I will look forward to seeing you in class.